All right, well, I was going to wait till this weekend to make this video, but I'm a little bit wired after watching the first NFL game of the season uh, tonight. Not uh, not a fan of either team, just a neutral observer. And uh, so on my channel, I had a question about my setup and how I do the recording. So uh, apologies that I'm kind of holding this and doing this in sort of selfie mode, but I'm going to uh, flip this around now and just show you what my setup is for how I play the Stratomatic games for the, the Tenacious Baseball League. So, hold on a second. Okay, so I have this workbench here that uh, was given to me by a family member after they were through with it. And so... I have this, this is the main contraption that I have. Uh, a few years ago I had to fix um, a drawer in my kitchen and I needed to be able to hold a couple pieces of wood together while the glue set. And so this guy here is like a uh, fancy schmancy clamp. Like, it goes pretty long as you can see here. But it actually worked pretty well. I can just clamp that guy down and this screws into place and it will clamp that phone, actually the phone that I'm holding right now, clamps it pretty well down into place here. So um, I can just leave it there and I have my little clipboard and there's my pen I've been keeping here. I have an upside down disc. This is where uh, cold tasty beverages sit. It's one of my it's a impromptu coaster. I have a bunch of junk in my the box from the game, which I don't use a whole lot. And I, you see underneath there the nice uh, Wrigley Field uh, down here. Uh, that down here, I guess I turned the camera too much. So there's a bunch of junk in this room, but I have some other things over here. I've been keeping the advanced fielding chart. Um, up here I have the advanced strategy chart. And so, let's see. Oh, so I meant to also show you that this guy here is hooked into a vise, which is hooked into a wood contraption that I built at my parents a few weekends ago before I was using a couple of um, two by fours that I had clamped together. And then I went up to, and my dad has a, a very complete shop with all sorts of fun tools and gadgets and stuff and so this isn't the most elaborate elaborately designed thing in the world but it was a nice um, you know I tried to basically make it taller than what I had started with because I wanted to be able to show the cards and the score sheet and all that good stuff and that's actually working out pretty well um the rest of my setup here, I have a trouble light, which helps with some of the lighting here. This is what I use. I guess it's pretty, uh, pretty bare, <laughs> what do you want to say, uh, low budget <laughs> operation here. All right, so then the other thing I'll show you, I guess, for now is my, I have some cheat sheets that I've created out of index cards because I get sick of having to flip over things so I told you that I started using the super advanced solitaire usage chart well that's basically it boiled down so first you have to roll a six-sided die which is on the left column and then that tells you which positions are going to be uh, potentially substituted and then you add the bats and walks for the players that would be uh, subject to those substitutions and then roll the 20 sided and you can see the split the split get is whether they'll rest so if someone has let's say 376 at bats and walks combined uh, if you roll between a 1 and 19 they have to rest so anyway that's that I have one over here I know it's kind of bright here because of the trouble light maybe I'll turn it off now hold on this way Eh, that's not too bad. I thought I was going to maybe freak out my camera. 
Uh, so this is uh, one of my later ones is the infield end result, so I don't have to keep flipping over the advanced strategy chart. So, um, and down here I have the I have a uh, a rather uh, a busy chart here with a bunch of different things, so I can basically look up and have an idea of if I'm forgetting something in my figuring. I've got most of it. I got a lot of it memorized now, but there's still some things that it's good to have that there. I also have this, which is my um, the the stealing chart. Uh, it's just boiled down a bit more, and I also have numbers there for holds versus uh, playing off. So, just it, it's it makes it quicker for me to then know that uh, you know a, a C is going to be minus three as opposed to an, a double A, which is uh, actually the double A is minus one on this chart. And I got to check and make sure that's true. I think it is, but I was watching a video earlier today and they might have done a minus two for the double A so I have to make sure that's right um okay lastly well there are a couple my my kids pictures from many years ago I should get some updated ones but anyway oh, also underneath them is a Buffalo Bills ticket stub from a couple of years ago these guys here I've used for tools in the past well I have them set up now where I can set my extra cards in here like this so I put um, my discards on the bottom which are, include like starting pitchers I'm not using and also players that have been removed from the game then on this rack I put my unused uh, field players position players up here because I would probably grab them most off of here is where I put my, the relief pitchers that are in the bullpen so uh, and I have them for over here too. Uh, before I was having them kind of lay around here on the table and it was a bit uh, scattered shot and got a little messy at times and tough to handle. And uh, now, not so much. So, oh, yeah, I guess I have one more thing here. I put a couple nails in there and on this side here I have a uh, my two little booklets that I've made. One has the depth charts and uh, relief pitcher usage, etc, etc. Um, also my the 25 man rosters as they stand and uh, inactive players. And then on this guy here uh, I can take it off of here and show you. This is my these are my lineups that are optimized for each handed of pitching. So this is what I start with when I go and do the solitary usage chart. So that's what we got going on for my setup. I hope that answers your question. I'm sure that's not the most correct way to do it. There's selfie sticks. There's um, you know other types of contraptions which I'm sure would hold um, you know hold a phone. But I I do think that uh, this particular clamp I, I like the fact that I'm getting to use it again after not having a use for it for many many moons <laughs> so and uh i don't know does the job now the trouble is uh when that if i have to move it like let's say i want to play a game without the camera and i i do like to use this space now that i have these um the pegboard set up right so i can put my extra cards here and there um it is kind of nice to do this right at this bench and so if I take that off then it gets it makes it pretty tough to put it back together again and uh, I'm afraid at times I'm gonna like bust my phone if that thing falls on top of it or falls just right so you know there's uh, some ups and some downs but anyway that's my setup here in my uh, little workshop room here it's a very small room but it's uh, what I got so you gotta play the ball as it lies being a golfer and all so that's what i'm doing playing the ball as it lies so uh maybe they'll come out with a stratomatic golf version one of these days i know that there's at least one of the other companies that does have that so 
Anyway, this is Earl. Uh, this is just a, a real quick video. Uh, I got some more game videos coming out here very shortly. Um, probably tomorrow night. I just was trying to fiddle around with a couple things. but um, So look for those. And until then, uh, keep on stratting, uh, and we'll see you soon.